Uh, Warren, you mentioned in response to an earlier question that Ajit and Greg are both here to answer questions, and so I thought I'd ask this question that comes from Will in Seattle. He says, his question is for Mr. Ajit Jain and Mr. Warren Buffett. You have said that you communicate regularly about unconventional insurance contracts that expose the company to extremely unlikely but highly costly events. I'm curious about how you think about and safely price these unconventional insurance contracts. What analyses and mental checks do you run through your head to make sure that Berkshire Hathaway will profit without being unduly exposed to, ta to catastrophic risk? Furthermore, Mr. Buffett, would you want a future CEO to continue a similarly close collaboration with the chief underwriter? Uh, we will get a microphone to Ajit and spotlight uh, in just a, just a second. And there he is. Ajit, why don't you answer first if you'd like to? Hi. Um, Obviously, the starting point, I mean, these, un uh, these situations where there's not enough risk, not enough data to hang our hat on, it's more of an art than a science. Uh, we start off with as much science as we can use, looking at historical data that, that relates to the risk in particular or something that cl comes close to relating to the risk that we're looking at. And then beyond that, if there's not enough historical data we can look at, then clearly we have to make a judgment in terms of what are the odds of something like that happening. We try, we absolutely, in situations like that, we absolutely make sure we cap our exposure so that if something bad happens or if we got something wrong, we absolutely know that how much money we can lose and whether we can absorb that loss without much pain to the income statement or the balance sheet. Uh, in terms of art, it's, it's a difficult situation. More often than not, it's impossible to have a point of view, and we end up passing on it. But every now and then, we think we can get a price where the subjective odds we have of something like that happening has a significant margin of safety in it. So we feel it's a risk that's worth taking. And then finally, the absolute asset test is, I pick up the phone and call Warren. And say, Warren, here's the deal. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It's not easy, and you wouldn't want just anybody doing no. it for you. No. 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 In fact, the only one I would want doing it for us on, on the kind of things we have sometimes received is a G. I mean, it's, it's, it's that simple. There isn't anybody, there isn't anybody like him. Uh, and as a G, said, we'll, we'll look at a worst case, but we are willing, if we like the odds, and like you say, there's no way to look these up. I, we can tell you how many, you know, uh, or how many 6.0 or greater earthquakes have happened in the last 100 years in, in uh, Alaska or California or so on, and we, we can, there's a lot of things you can look up figures on. Now, Sometimes those are useful and sometimes they aren't, but there's a lot where you can get a lot of data. And then there's others that, uh, well, after 9-11, uh, you know, was that going to be the first of several other attacks that were going to happen very quickly? There were planes flying that couldn't, well, they couldn't land in Hong Kong, as I remember. I think it was Cafe Pacific, uh, couldn't land in Hong Kong the following Monday unless they had a big liability uh, coverage placed with somebody. Uh, I mean, the world had to go on. The people that held mortgages on the Sears Tower and all of a sudden wanted the coverage, or I'm, I'm just, I, I think that actually was one, but there were, they were just pouring in of uh, people that were, hadn't been worried about something a week earlier, and now they were worried about things involving huge sums. And there were really only a couple people in the world that would even listen and had the, and had the capacity to take on uh, a lot of the deals we were proposed. And there's no book to look up. Uh, so you do, there's a big element of judgment. Ajit and I, uh, I mean, Ajit's 100 times better at this than I am, but we do tend to think alike uh, on this sort of thing. You don't want to think too much alike, but, but we think alike. Uh, I've got a willingness to 
lose a lot of money. And, and uh, uh, most, well, virtually every insurance company, if they get up to higher limits, they've got treaties in place and they can only take this much. And they, uh, so the world was paralyzed on that. We don't get those but now, obviously, but we do occasionally get uh, uh, inquiries about doing things that really nobody else in the, the world can do. It's a little like our investment situation, only transferred over the insurance. Uh, we don't build the business around it, but we are ready when the time comes. And, and Ajit is an asset that no other company in the world has. And, uh, and uh, we work him. <laughs> and, and, and we actually enjoy a lot talking to each other about these kind of risks because uh, he'll ask me to think about what the price should be and he'll think about it. We don't tell each other ahead of time. And, and then I'll name it and then he'll say, have you lost your mind, Warren? You know? <laughs> and, then he, and then he'll point something out to me that I've overlooked. And it's a lot of fun and it's made us a lot of money. And uh, uh, the shareholders of Berkshire Hathaway are extraordinarily like, you can't hire people like a Jeep. I mean, it, it, you, know, you, you, get them, you get them once in a lifetime. Charlie? I don't think we helped him very much. <laughs> it's really difficult. There, there will be a time when, I mean, I probably won't be around then, but there will be a time occasionally, just like in financial markets, when things are happening in the insurance world, and basically uh, Berkshire will be the only one virtually the only one people people turn to. But, uh, and, and but in the past, Aji talking to you has added more than $50 billion of dollars to the balance sheet at, of Berkshire by making these oddball calls. And if he, had, if he hadn't talked to me, it'd be probably $49.9 billion. <laughs> yeah. But, but, it, but you don't want to try, don't try this at home. I mean, it, yeah, that, it, this is, that doesn't mean it's easy. No, it, and, and it's not very teachable. I mean, it, no, it isn't very teachable. No, no, You're right. No, it is not. It's not something that that Berkshire has some secret formula someplace for. It it, it, it basically is a is a very unusual talent with the gate and uh, and we're this, not holding anything back. It's hard. 